Investigators in Venezuela say they have identified the masterminds in the apparent assassination attempt on President Maduro. Two drone pilots were among those arrested. The video of the exploding drone tweeted by an expert at Oxford University. My next guest calls drone attacks essentially terrorism by joystick, writing, not only can pre-programmed drones swoop in almost from almost any direction, but they can also be used by anyone with the means to buy them. Worse, threats from the sky used to be exclusively the domain of nation states. That has changed in the past two weeks. Now a far broader and more elusive menace has emerged and must be addressed. Bernard Hudson, he's a former CIA operations officer, joins me now. I don't get rattled by much, Bernard, I have to say, but when I read your op-ed, I'll tell you, like, I have anxiety about this. Um, what can governments do to protect people? Well, I think there's, there's two things, Dana, uh, that governments need to do. And number one, they are already doing it worldwide, which is go look for the bad guys and the people who want to carry out these sort of attacks. There aren't more extremists in the world today than there were two weeks ago, but they've now gotten a tool that previously they didn't have, which essentially is something you might call a suicide bomber in a box. The other piece that governments need to focus on, it's actually more the, the drone industry. Stopping a drone requires you to actually see that drone before you can do something to it. Mm -hmm. Currently, it is very technically hard to actually see these small objects flying around, especially in cities where you have tall buildings. That's going to be pushed onto the commercial drone industry to come up with a solution and then for government to take a look at those solutions and implement them in the airspace, both in the U.S. and abroad. But is the government, and not just ours, but maybe those across the world, maybe impotent in this regard? I mean, how, it, it, I, I mean I, I'm not going to say it's impossible to figure out a way to prevent something like this from happening, but it seems to me like it, if you marry up terrorism with some sort of other uh, technology, be it a drone that is remote controlled, then how are people supposed to protect themselves? And I think that this is quite worrying. Well, there, there's good reason to be concerned about this. And the, probably the bad guys have a temporary technolo technological advantage okay. until the rest of us can figure out a way to spot these things in the air. We'll eventually, in the drone industry, they'll figure that out. But there's this temporary period where, unfortunately, you know, there's an advantage to the bad guys because the one place we never looked at threats coming to us from was, is usually from the air. I mean, mm -hmm. that's always been something only a government could do, and now it's, you know, an extremist with a few thousand dollars and uh, an agenda. There was speculation that perhaps Maduro, um, that this was sort of a planned exercise to make it look like he had an assassination attempt to get some more support in the country. There were rallies held in support of him yesterday. Have you heard anything like that? I have not, and when you take a look at that video, it would seem to me to sort of demonstrate uh, mm -hmm. kind of a loss of control when that happens at a public event like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm an expert on Venezuela, but mm -hmm. the threat uh, is pretty serious. You know, two weeks ago, we had a threat to the airport in Abu Dhabi from rebels in Yemen that launched a drone hundreds of kilometers into the United Arab Emirates, into an right. active air zone. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just, I mean, as bad as the Venezuela piece is, mm -hmm. it isn't the only event we're watching these days. And then let me take, outside of governments, of course, um, people, human beings like to go to big events. They like outdoor gatherings. We're coming up on all sorts of things, like football season, concert season. Um, are there things that private companies should be doing to try to figure out a way to protect their patrons from possible things like this? I think they're probably continuing to work closely with local law enforcement because, again, the, there will be people behind these attacks, and these people leave footprints that security services around the world are looking for. Unfortunately, right now, uh, and again, it's a good question, in the counter-drone world, things that you could buy and do, it's, it's quite limited. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of hyperbole about what can be done in the counter-drone space, but there aren't great one-size-fits-all solutions yet. There will be eventually, yeah. but there isn't today. Well, it sounds like we need some innovation in that world for the good guys. Thank you, Bernard. appreciate you coming on. My pleasure. Thank you.